Rabotai, welcome to our Monday night shiur. Uh, tonight, our shiur is sponsored Leilu Nishmat Chayalei Yisrael that passed away on the war that's going on right now. And also, all of Chayalei Yisrael that uh, passed away during the Simchat Torah Tashin Pei Dalet. And especially Ilan Eliyahu Ben Marina Mazal, Ruach Hashem Tenichem Began Eden. Amen. And also the Hashem Shri Yivarech Kal Yisrael that we should, that all the Shvuim, all the, I like to call them Mitzotzot de Kedusha, that are in the hands of the Klippa should come back home. Just as we saw, I think till now 40, 50 or something like that, uh, that they uh, already came, may all of them come home. Amen. And may Amen. this Ruach Shad Tshuva, this, this spirit of Tshuva that has been, that has been taking control of Ka Yisrael lately, that has been sweeping the nation, because really that's the Nitzot, that's the deep, the deep, inside every one of Am Yisrael, that's the Nitzot that wants it. He wants to be Chosar, he wants Hashem. He wants to see HaKadosh Baruch Hu. May it continue and continue and continue. Ad B'Sat Hashem, Yat Mashiach Tzitkeinu. And uh, we see miracles every day. There's a special booklet that came out, all the miracles that, came, that has happened so far since the war happened. I'm sure you guys all saw a picture. There was this guy in the war, before the ceasefire, a terrorist shot him, and uh, he had a tehillim in his breast pocket, and the bullet was in the tehillim. Mamash lodged in the tehillim. The tehillim stopped the impact. You guys don't know, but I read a lot of stories and stuff for inspiration. I'm in constant need of inspiration. Um, I was once reading a book on the Yom Kippur War. Yom Kippur War. And there was a pilot, many pilots died in the Yom Kippur War. And there was a pilot that was saved, and he was shot down by the Egyptian gunman. And when he, he was saved at the end, and his whole body was full of bullets, but his heart was intact. He had a small TV. He was a, how do you call this, uh, Dati pilot. It was a story, I, I once read it. And inside that Tehillim was a bullet. It stopped it. As a kid, I read the story. And I said to myself, you know, I had my doubts. You know what, a Tehillim is going to stop a bullet? I mean, how thick is a Tehillim already? I mean, how small can you make it? You know, as a kid, I said this to myself. But you know, of course, in Munat Chachamim, in Munat, of course, anything could happen. And when I saw this story, I just came out. I was like, I just, I just got back to when I was 10, 9 years old. When we used to get those comics in yeshiva, and one of these stories was over there. Mama, I, I still remember the page. I remember the picture of the story, to that extent. And I remember telling myself, how could a Tehillim block a bullet? And seeing this story over here just gave me, when I first saw it, I mean, I even saved the picture on my phone to the point where I should always remember how Hashem's miracles are. And we see many miracles, and you know, we always say the internet is bad, internet is bad, internet is bad, and it is bad. There's a lot of ta'avot over there. But one thing it has done for Kali Yisrael over here today, it has shown and it has blown up every single miracle that has happened to Kali Yisrael in these past 51 days. It has just blown it up. It's like instead of turning this thing into the Shoah, where people were like, where was Hashem? People are saying, Hashem was everywhere. That's what it has done. So there was something good in all of this that came out that everybody's saying there was Hashem and there was Hashem and there was Hashem. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is everywhere. There's many stories, I don't want to get into it right now, but of course we continue praying. You know, the problem is, with this whole ceasefire, right? As last week's parasha said, and everybody was saying that in the videos, that Lavan said to Yaakov, let's make a ceasefire. And the ceasefire was last week. And we're continuing on to see what's going to be this week's parasha. Because you know, this week's parasha, Shimon and Levi wage a war versus a city. So we're waiting to see who's the Shimon Velevi. We have a couple of candidates, but unfortunately, unfortunately they're in America. Uh, so we're waiting to see what's the connection with this week's parasha. We have that full emunah that everything is going to connect. But uh, last week's parasha, they made a ceasefire. What does a ceasefire do? It causes all of Am to stop praying. That's it. All those messages. There's war in the night. Say Tehillim in the night. There is, uh, people need money for this. The Tzahal, the tzahal needs money. The IDF needs money for this. Give, give, give Tzitziyat, suddenly everything a bit diminished. It diminished. The momentum has stopped, which is very bad. It's very bad. Now, we're nothing... Every, every Nishama of Kali Yisrael, you know, the head of the Hamas, Nikim, I don't want to say his name, he's Haman. For me, he's Haman. 
he, and he looks like Haman. I don't know why I know he looks like Haman. And when he came, you know how he came out of jail, right? And when Gilad Shalit, that soldier, was in the captive, captivity for five years. And then the Hamas said, give us 1,200, something like that. 1,100. Uh, exchange. Exchange. 1,100 for one. And the whole uh, Israel was in the fight. Yes or no? Avovadia <laughs> Yosef. We forgot who he was? Nope. Avovadia Yosef said, give. He was for it. He said, it's worth it. To give one. And who was one of them? One with this head of the Hamas who planned the whole thing. Going out? He went out already. He was the one who planned the whole thing. This Haman. Now, are we going to say anything against Shalom? We're not even the dirt under his fingernails. If he had dirt over there. But we're going to say that we see the value of Jewish life. Of any life, but Jewish life specifically. And on this note, I want to start the parasha. Guys, there's beautiful things to parasha. Many of them are not my thoughts. I don't remember where I saw them, so I'm going to say them in the name, whoever said them. You always work with me over here. Then I'm going to tell you something phenomenal. If you're still with me and you're not falling asleep by that time, from this book that I just got by a Yid, a very special Yid, called Chukei Chayim, a book that I was looking for for a very long time. It was out of print for years. And it just came in print again, Chukei Chayim. This is by a big Mikubal called Rabbi Vidal Koyinka. Rabbi Vidal Koyinka was a Jew from Greece, from Saloniki. Many people, nobody here heard of him, that's for sure. He sounds very much like Rabbi Chaim Vital. His name was Rabbi Vidal. Vidal in Greece means life. Also Vital in Italian also means life. That's why his name was Rabbi Chaim Vital. So it's the same, it's the same, it's the same meaning. Also, um, for Rabbi Vidal on the, the Magid Mission on the Rambam also, that means life. So that's why he named his book Chukei Chaim, the laws of life, because that's what it means in the in the tongue of the of Greece. So uh, what he was the Rosh Yeshivat Chesed El. Everyone knows that the Rasha Shabbi Shalom Shariabi started off in the Yeshiva Bet El in Yerushalayim. That was the Yeshiva of the Mekubalim. Everyone knows that, but people don't know. At one time there was a Machloket in the Yeshiva, and the Yeshiva split into two. <laughs> the Rosh Hashanah's yeshiva, after he passed away, obviously. This is in the early, uh, late 1800s. The yeshiva split into two. They had a machloket, how to do the kavanah and the shemitah here. Because there is a rule in Eretz Yisrael. Many rabbis say you don't do kabbalistic kavanot in the, in the sabbatical year. There is no kavanot in that year. Can you imagine? That means everybody in the sabbatical year are praying very fast. And there was a group of rabbis who said, no, you still have to do kavana on that year. And it was so hard, the machloket between them, that the yeshiva split. So there was Bet El in, the, in, in Yerushalayim, the heart of Yerushalayim. Then towards the, you know, towards the western part of Yerushalayim, a new yeshiva opened up called Chesed El. Chesed El. Think about that name. And Chesed El, the Rosh Yeshiva was Rabbi Vidal Koyinka. He passed away very young, in his early 50s. Um, he was a big tzaddik, Mikubal. All the Mikubalim of the next generation were his Talmudim. And he, I'm going to tell you something so crazy, something so wonderful, from this Sefer, which I was just rummaging through, but I didn't have time to really look into it. Such, something so amazing. If you're going to keep awake to the last seconds of this viewer, you might catch it. It's just a... Phenomenal thing. But you're going to have to wait because I want to say something from this week's parasha and connect everything together if I'll be able to. The Pasuk says, Ve'yishlach Yaakov Malachim. This week's parasha, Yaakov Avino is coming back home. That's it. After how many years? 22 years. One year on the road. Lavan took him one day to travel seven days just to catch up to Yaakov. What was Yaakov doing on one year on the road? Took his sweet time. The Midrash calls him out for that, by the way. Mm -hmm. What are you doing spending one year on the road? Pack up your bags quickly, go home. Your father is waiting to see you. Your mother is dying. I'm not saying anything against Yaakov Avinu. I'm just quoting you the Midrash. That's it. The, the Midrash calls him out on it. Yaakov Avinu, Bechir Shabbat. He spends one year on the road. He, and right before he gets to Eretz Israel, 
he decides to send messengers to Esav. Oh, the Midrash has a field day on this. The Midrash Rabbah says, what are you doing, Yaakov Avinu? Why are you catching the dog by his ears? The Midrash says to Yaakov Avinu, what, what are you, why are you, how you say, poking the bear? Is Esav coming to see you? No. He's in Seir, for the love of God. He's down in Jordan. Jordan is Seir. Right? What are you doing inviting him to see you? What? So the, so the Midrash says, if you take a dog by the ear, if you twist the dog's ear, what is he going to do to you? He's going to bite you. So what did Esav come? With 400 men. You invited the dog, so the dog comes to see you. And Esav comes to him, and they say, he's come, He's not coming with a small, uh, you come to meet your brother with a couple of relatives, maybe a cousin, maybe a nephew he hasn't seen being born. It's a lot of wives. Who does he come with? 400 soldiers. Is that a war or is that a get together? I think that's a war. He's coming for a war. But the Midrash says, who made him come to the war? Yaakov. Who caused this after come? Yaakov. Whose fault it was? Yaakov Avinu. And the Gemara and the Midrash says, all throughout Jewish history, we have acted like Yaakov Avinu. We have invited the enemy to come and fight us. And look at his lashon. He says to his to the messengers that are going to meet Isaac, Ko Amar Avdecha Yaakov. So said. Your servant, Yaakov. Oh, says the Midrash. Not only did you invite the dog, what did you tell the dog? That you're a smaller dog than him. <coughs> That's how you're going to go meet your enemy? With no uh, self-esteem? If you're going to go meet your enemy, how do you got to go? You have to go ready to fight. What did Yaakov do? Yaakov Avinu. What did he do? Instead of being ready to fight, what does he tell Esav? Avdecha Yaakov. I'm your servant. He tries to place it, pl uh, placate him. He tries to calm him down. He tries to say, You were right. I stole the Berachot and I'm your servant now. And he goes even further. The Pasuk says, Vayira Yaakov me'od. Yaakov becomes very, Yaakov Avinu becomes very afraid. The Midrash says, Why are you afraid? You know what the Midrash says? Yaakov and his 12 sons could have killed Esav and all of his 400 men. More than this you want. Each one over there was a, was a power ranger. Each one over there could have taken out his uh, thing and uh, this thing called up. They were strong. There's a Midrash in Parashat Vayigash. When, they met each, when, when Yehuda met Yosef in Parashat Vayigash, Yehuda was wearing five garments and when he used to get angry, he say blood used to trickle out of his right eye, and from his chest was there was one hair that used to pop out and pierce like a knife all of his five garments. Shirt, maika, tzitzit, maybe two tzitzits, one kishitata techelet, one kishitat halavan, and it would pierce and he would he would get so angry he would take metal and start to chew it in his teeth. That's why Yaakov blessed him. May your may your teeth be white like milk. Why? Milk is calcium. It makes the teeth hard. He used to break his teeth a lot. He would get angry, he would break his teeth. I'm not joking, this is a Midrash. We open up a Ma'am law, as that's what's written over there. These guys were strong. And it says when Yosef used to get upset, he used to take marble and he used to smash it with his hands. They're afraid of a couple of Romans. No offense to anybody whose name is Roman. They're afraid of a couple of, of, a couple of, of, of rednecks. They didn't want to kill anyone. How is the Umav? You're wrong, I'll tell you why. I know Rashi says that, but I'm going to give you a, an Akasha on Rashi. You know, when Ramban asks a question on Rashi, he asks all the way. All right? How do we... How was, it, how was the Umav Esav named, Daniel? How was it named? How was Esav named? What is his name? Edom, right? right. Red. 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 After what? He was red. Because of food. Because he was a glutton. He was, he was hungry. Glutton. Imagine being named after a food. <coughs> That's what kind of animalistic people they were. What did he name himself? Edom. Why did he call himself Edom? Because they said, we're Adam. We're the sons of Adam. 
We are the main people. We're red. We're human. We're European. We're Adam. We're blood. Yeah, Edom. We're red. Also China, by the way. They each other. They like each other, you know. And right in the middle of the Palestinian flag, what do you have over there? Also Edom. Boom. So we're Edom. We're Esa. We're red. We could fight. We're blood. What does the Torah say? Why does the Torah go out of its way to name to name Esav Edom? To tell us. You know why he's named Edom? Not after Adam. After food. Why is Yaakov afraid of him? Vayira Yaakov me'od. Yaakov is afraid. Vayetz, no, it's Vayetzer lo. It shook him to the core. But Hashem promised you, says the Midrash. Hashem promised you. He said, I'm going to bring you back home. I'm going to bring you back home to your father's house. Veshafti b'shalom el bet avi. I'm going to come back home. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be good. Why are you afraid, Yaakov? So Rashi says, he's quoting also a matter. He says, Shema yigrom achet. Maybe I did an avera that made me a lesser tzaddik than Esav. What avera was that? Anybody know? Kibud Avayim. Kibud Avayim. He was missing the mitzvah, excuse me, of Kibud Avayim for 22 years. Really more. It was 30, 30, 36 years. How come 14 years is not ca- counted? Because he was in yeshiva during that time. Talmud Torah. Can make it well. When you're learning Torah, you're patur. How about Esav? You were huh? there at the time. Was Esav where? He was next to his father at the time, was he? Yeah. But when his father called him, who would used to come? Esav. Now, the pasuk wants to, it's the matter says midrash Shabbat, Read it. You can read it yourself. It's in English, by the way. Our school translated midrash Shabbat. The pasuk says that the pasuk wanted to prove to Yaakov Avinu that he didn't do kibud avayim. How do we know? Does it say that Rivka Imenu passed away in the sixth parasha? No. Who passed away? It says. This is our Jewish trivia for today. Who passed away? Somebody who What was her name? What was her name? Devora, correct. Thank you. Why does it say that Devora passed away? Not to put down Yaakov. How come you weren't there at the death of your mother? But also because not to say, the Pasuk should say, that who was the one taking care of her during the death? Esa. But how do you think Esa buried her? You think Esa was caring? He, he cared about her life insurance. Uh-huh. You think Esau cared about uh, his mother passing away? He cared about her life insurance. How much money is going to get out of the inheritance? What, these things are on today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, more, it's more common than you think, unfortunately. Unfortunately. So, Esau, so, the, so the Pasuk shouldn't put down Rivka and Yaakov. The Pasuk doesn't want to mention that was really who passed away. Rivka was really... Devo- it was, uh, they didn't want to mention Rivka, so it said Devora. But who, who really passed away? It was Rivka. They both passed away. <coughs> and Yaakov, when he heard about it, what did Yaakov do? He named that place that he found out, Alon Bachud. Over there I cried. The Pasuk says, Vayira Yaakov Me'od. He gets ready for war. He gets ready. What does he do first? He starts to daven. Elohe Avi Avraham. Elohe Avi Yitzchak. Hashem, you told me I'm going to come back home. You said I'm going to give you chesed and emet and truth. I, I left the Yarden with a, with a stick, and now look how I'm coming back. I'm two camps. Shnei machanot. I'm a camp. I'm not one camp. I'm two camps. Hatzileini na. Save me. Miyad Achi. From my brother. Miyad Esav. From Esav. If he comes to me as a brother, that means sometimes my brother comes to me to trick me. But he comes to me as who? Holding an olive branch. And sometimes he comes to me as Esav with his true intention to kill. Whether he comes to me with an olive branch, save me. I don't want to assimilate with him. Or whether he comes to me as Esav and he wants to kill me, save me both ways. Ki yare anochi oto, I'm afraid of him. Pen yavo, maybe he will come and kill the children in front of the mothers. As Hamas did right now when they took babies and they put them in microwaves in front of their mothers. This Esav, by the way. By the way, all these Palestinians, they're not Arabs. The Arabs say themselves, these are not Arabs. They say, if you listen to them, they're not Arabs. These are Edomim. They're Turkim. They're Ottomans. They're Greeks. They're not, they're not, they're not Arabs. They're not, they're not. Okay? That's Peri something else. But these are people, are, they're Amalek. More than Peri Adam. They're all Amalek. 
And you said, I'm going to make your nation. What does he do? Instead of the Midrash, is instead of going to face, face forward, instead of fighting the dog, you invited him. Now fight him. Instead of coming to him face to face, what does he do? He decides to send him a gift, a gift card. He sends him 20 uh, sheep, 200 uh, rams. He sends him 200 uh, male uh, rams. Oh, you know what 200 male rams is? You know kind of gimalim, 30 gimalim, 40 parim, bulls, atonot. He sends him a nice uh, welcoming gift. He's supposed to welcome him and he's sending him the gifts. Midrash says, what is he doing? Fight! No, Yaakov chooses the... The high peace road. way. The high road. The ha- you call it the higher, but Hashem wasn't happy with him. <laughs> the, the Midrash, Hashem was not happy with him. I'm giving you so much power, fight him! Oh, was he flattering? Who? And he was flattering him too. Yeah, the Rasha. He was flattering the Rasha. And he says to him, when you meet my brother, what should you say? And this is the, this is the, you say, the, the, the nail in the coffin. So said your servant Yaakov. Not only did you invite him, you gave him a gift card. You're afraid and you even put yourself down and call him your master. Why you do that? And to make things worse, when he comes to him, what does he do? Bow. He bows down. Not one time, <coughs> seven times. Oh. Wow. Now, I just want to tell you guys one thing. Says the Ramban, Nachmanides, all these things that Yaakov Avinu did, set the stage of the Jewish DNA. How come every time the Jews are in a fight, Instead of finishing the war, what do they do? They make peace. They make peace. Instead of finishing the job, they keep on sending gifts. More humanitarian aid. More gas into Gaza. This is one example, but I could give you hundreds of examples. The Ramban said, and this is scary, but you can look at the Ramban as with Parasha. Who invited, who caused the Romans to destroy the Beit HaMikdash? Says the Ramban. You guys say like you're so sure, like you read the Ramban yeah. and you read Josephus and you read the uh, Maccabean, Maccabean revolt. How do you know how it happened? How did it happen? How? You can say the Jews, okay? It's easy to say the Jews. Obviously, that's where I'm going with. The Ramban said, Who called the Romans into Eretz Israel? If I tell you the answer right now, I'm not sure you're going to want to light Hanukkah candles. The Jew himself. Oh, which one? The Hashemon. Which one? Uh, Maccabim. Huh? They're called Maccabim, John. Which one? They're five brothers Matityahu. and one papa. Matityahu died on the first day, according to some opinions. No, he's good. He's good. Yehuda. Yehuda HaMaccabim. They were Kohanim, of course. Yehuda HaMaccabim wanted to scare away the Greeks. So he thought the best way to do that is to call a third party in, make a peace treaty with them, and they're going to scare away the Greeks. And who he said, who are, who's the rising power today, he said? Right across the Mediterranean. Our neighbors, who? Italiani, the Romans. Let me call in the Romans, make a peace treaty with them, and the Greeks will say, wow, they have so much power right now, we're going to let them go. What in reality he did, when the Romans came to Eretz Yisrael and they saw the fat, luscious land, and it was ripe for the picking, instead of leaving everything to Eretz to Am Yisrael, what did they do at the end? They came and they occupied themselves. And they kicked everybody out and they destroyed. Josephus says, Josephus, he was a Kohen too. Josephun. We don't trust him so much because he was a renegade and a, he was a traitor. So you can't trust a traitor to write Jewish history because you're a traitor yourself. But some things we believe in. If you learn how to learn his stuff correctly, you'll see. Josephus says if you were there when the Romans raised Jerusalem, you would never have believed there was a city there to begin with. They did, what does it say in chapter 137 of Tehillim? You guys ever read it? Oh, oh, oh. Aru, aru, ada, yesod, ba'i. They didn't just raise the city. 
they dug up the foundations, they raised it from the foundations. But the Ramban says, who invited them? Yehuda HaMakabi invited them. Who told you to, to take the dog by the ear? Hashem already gave you a miracle. More than one miracle. He gave you a... And not only that. It says when the Jews saw that the candle lit for eight days, it was so special to them, it was worth more than Nebuah to them. You know what Nebuah is? Pro prophecy. But prophecy is something that one guy gets. Correct or incorrect? Okay, yes. you believe him or you don't believe him, it's your problem. You'll see in the future whether it was true, correct? Right. But when they saw the light light for eight days, Am Yisrael went ballistic. You know how many miracles the Jews have? Open up a Sechetani. Hundreds of miracles. It names all the miracles. How come we don't make miracles out of that? Because it wasn't a miracle that was for the Hulk, Am Yisrael. But when the Kla Yisrael saw the miracle that lasted for eight days and nights, they went crazy. They said, this is a sign that Hashem is what? With us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with us. To the point where till today, what do we do? We light Nerot Hanukkah. And by the way, when you light Nerot Hanukkah, it's a sigula, Masech Shabbat, to have good kids. Don't light candles in one of those uh, things that your kids bring back home from school. <laughs> we can. You know, those, yeah, those, those candles, uh, with the candles and the... Uh, that's one thing. But you know those plastic things, you know, that they look very nice? Don't do that, please. Go to the... Uh, I have a nice silver store in Williamsburg. Nobody knows about it. It's on the corner over there. Not that sort of him. It's like, it's like a hole in the wall. Go in, it's like a guy who's like 80 years old. He's going to speak to you for like 30 minutes. And everything is half the price of Hatsorfim. Sorry, Hatsorfim. And he sells you such things over there. Be'emet, be'amitut ayyan. I hope he's still open. And uh, you're going to get yourself a nice silver menorah. If you're a bit, get silver and gold plated. Show Hashem Yitbarak that you want the light. That you're the Kohen Gadol in your house. You live alone. You live with your parents. It doesn't matter. You light the candle. Lighting the candles, by the way, that half an hour that you're going to light the candles. It's not a sure on Hanukkah, but I'm telling you right now, if you guys want to hear something from me, if you want to hear. I'm assuming you're here, that's why you're here, right? That half an hour that you're lighting the candles is applicable, it's connected to, it's like half an hour of Yom Kippur every night. Every night? Yeah, every night, half an hour of Yom Kippur is open. Half an hour of Yom Kippur is open. The power of Nila? Yeah, and the power of, exactly, of Bina Ila. And that half an hour, that's why there's 13. When you say the blessing, there's how many words? 13. I gave a shiur about this once upon a time. You guys already forgot. There's 13 words in that Hanukkah bracha. There's 13 words. Those 13 words are connected to Kel, Rachum, Vechanun, Erech, Hapayim, Rav Chesed, Vehemet. For half an hour. Oh, you only have half an hour, by the way. Exactly, that's why you, Shalom Aleichem. That's why for half an hour, you're not allowed to work. Even your wife is not allowed to work. She shouldn't work. I mean, not allowed. She shouldn't work during that time. Don't, Allah mitzit it. But, we can't lie to ourselves and say that the end of the destruction, we invited to ourselves. Why? Yehuda HaMakabi invited the Romans to be where? In Eretz Yisrael. We have to say the truth, Rabbi Yisai. And what happened at the end of the day? His brother, Yonatan, and then Shimon, Shimon HaMakabi, he ended up becoming a king of Am Yisrael. Was he allowed to become a king? No. No. He didn't go against the Chachamim. He just made himself a prince. Who put you a prince? His son already made himself what? A king. You guys know how the Makabim all blew up? When did they blow up? What, how do you hurt a guy the most when you speak about what about him? His kids. His kids or his fat or his genealogy? Genial. His genealogy. Yo mama, my mama, everybody's mamas, right? <laughs> so they told the son of Shimon Maccabee, you can't be Kohen Gadol. Why? Your mom was a hostage. And a girl that was a hostage by Goyim, we always assume that she was with a Goy. Even though it was by force. But in that case, she's a pasul kihuna. And since your mom was in a city that was in siege, you're pasul kihuna. When he heard that, how they say in Bukharian, Mainesh, 
Gah. His head went Levi. He went le- when I say Levi, I mean really Levi. He became a Tziduki, a Sadducee. And he went against the Chachamim. The ch- they said in Yerushalayim, you couldn't find a Chacham. There wasn't people who could say, Nevarech Shacham and Mishalom. You couldn't find a person that could say a Zimun. To that extent, they were against the Chachamim over there. Why? You touched my family genealogy and you became a Tziduki. You should, by the way, you should know one thing. 200 years out of 420 years, Am Yisrael was autonomous in the second temple. And 200 years was under the Hasmonaim dynasty. That Hasmonaim dynasty, don't think it was, uh, Am Yisrael was free and everything was nice and dandy. That time was actually one of the worst times for Kali Yisrael. Our own Jewish kings, the Hasmonaim, what did they do to Am Yisrael, to the religious Jews? Suppress. They suppressed us, they put us in jails. Read Josephus if you dare. One time in your life, open up that book if you, if you could, read it. See what happened to us during the Hashemunayim dynasty. It's very, very sad stuff over there. That's why, we, that's why we say the second temple was not a complete Giula. It wasn't a Giula at all. There were five things missing. Let's see if you guys remember the five things. What were the five things missing in the second the temple? Menorah. The fire from the Mizbeah. One. Menorah. Menorah. The altar. Uh, he the just ark. said the altar. Huh? Ark. The Ark. Aron Kodesh. The loaves of bread. No. He said Aron Kodesh already. Huh? The bread. There no. was loaves of bread. Fire. What's a part? Is a problem to make loaves of bread? Huh? Shechina was missing. The Shechina. Huh? Yeah. Those breads didn't last as long. Shechina. We're one more. What do you say? The fire. The teeth, no? but you're close. You want to say something else. What's it called? Urim. The Urim to me. You couldn't ask the Kohen Gadol why all Kohen Gadols were what back then? All fake. They, their they, they were. Uh, they were to the left. Levy? Yes, they still were afraid of the Chachamim. They were afraid. Why? Most Jews are what? Give us cups of food. What are most of us? We're pro rabbis. Ask any regular Jew in the street. <laughs> Does he listen to the Chachamim? He may not keep the Torah and mitzvot, but is he traditional? Yeah. Will he go to Shul on Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah? Absolutely. Absolutely. He, he loves Chacham. If he, he's in trouble, who does he go to? Chacham. The Chacham. He goes to the Chacham. Most Jews love the Chachamim. It's the truth. Okay? The Erev Rav is a very small but rich part of us. That's the problem. They're very rich. Okay, we're getting into too much Chashmonaim over here. I, we spoke about Yaakov Avi. Now, I want to read one story from the Midrash. I think you're going to like this story. So, what was, at the end of the day, what was Yaakov Avinu's way of dealing with our enemies? Peaceful. Bow yourself down. Put your head down. Let. You came late. You ought to read, please. All right, but good to see you. Nice to see you. I saw you with the Shtraimo. It was very nice. Um, in the past, the Gemara, the Gemara, the Midrash says, one time review Udahanasi, you know, review Udahanasi was a Gilgul of Yaakov Avinu. He wanted to send a letter to Antoninus. Antoninus, the emperor of Rome, his good friend, the Roman emperor. So he told his secretary. Rabbis back then had secretaries too. Don't think it's a new thing. It was a male secretary though. And he was a big Tana, Rabbi Afas. So he told Rabbi Afas, write on the letter, Antoninus Maran. Maran, my master. This is your servant, Yehuda. That's what he tells him today. Rabbi Afas gets angry at, at his Rebbe, Yehuda, and he says, Why are you inviting the Romans again? Not enough, we have their trouble. Again, you're calling them your master? So he wrote on the letter, From Yehuda Hanasi, To the emperor of Rome, Antoninus, that's the way it's supposed to be, right? From the prime minister, to the president, why are you calling yourself a servant? Yeah, Rabbi Udanasi takes the letter and he rips it off. He says, Rabbi, why are you doing that? He said, didn't you learn the parasha where Yaakov Avinu said to Antoninus, what did he say to him? Avdecha Yaakov, to Esau, I'm sorry, your servant Yaakov, just like my forefather Yaakov Avinu called himself a servant. So too I learned from my forefather when I'm dealing with the, with the emperor of Rome, I have to call myself to him, what? A servant. a servant. 
At the end, the Midrash doesn't say, did he send the letter, did he not send the letter? But what do we see over here in the Midrash? There are two ways of looking of, at what? At the way how to deal with Goyim. One way is, if the Goy slaps you, turn your other cheek, let him give you another slap. Another way is, if the Goy punches you, give him two punches back. It's two ways. Who's, where do we see the second way in our parasha? It's a machloket. Yaakov Avinu takes the slap me here, slap me there, as long as peace. peace. Who's the second opinion? Prepared to war. <laughs> yeah, it was prepared to war after he bowed down seven times. Shimon and Levi, thank you very much. <laughs> what does the parasha say? Yaakov Avinu comes in, and this is very big. I just want to let you know, I'm going to tell you a chidush now. I'm sure you guys heard this here and there, but I'm going to put it into perspective. But I'm going to put it into real perspective. You, uh, Yaakov Avinu comes in, he gets to Shechem, he buys the land. He doesn't say it's mine. He doesn't say, Hashem promised me it's mine. And trust me, back then, the Goyim would have trusted that he was a Navi. Trust me. He buys the land, the Mea Kisita. Kisita was a very expensive currency. Comes this Chamor, Shechem ben Chamor. Not only does he take Dina, according to some opinions, she was like five years old. Ve'ya'aneha. You guys know what that means. Ve'ya'aneha. He takes her home. Yaakov says, bring her back. You want to marry her? Bring her back home. What does he say? No. She's, she's by me. As if, you're, as if he's forcing Yaakov Avinu to agree. Once again, what does Yaakov Avinu do? Why? He's not looking for a fight. It's very interesting because by Lavan, he did the exact opposite. And that's already a shiur of its own. How come by Lavan, he used a different of escape, of causing a fight. He was looking to fight with Lavan. But, oh, and Hashem had to intervene. But over here, he takes the opposite approach. Everything is being... He's giving in. He's giving in. He comes in. All the brothers come in. There were 11 brothers at this point. And they answer, Bimirma. What's Bimirma? In one voice. Bimirma, really, it means trickery in, in English. But Unkulus says, Be? Bimayne. They answer with, now, when you're dealing with an enemy, do you play fair and square, or do you want to go for the win? You go for the win. So before you beat the enemy, you have to weaken him. And what's the way to weaken the enemy? You got to give him a brit milah. And that's what they did. Now, a guy doesn't think with his head. What does he think with? You know what he thinks with. Yeah, it's chimichangas. Right away, they hear, oh, we're going to marry Jewish girls. Oh, oh, they each get a brit milah. They're kofim. And suddenly they see Yehudiot. They all get a brit milah. This is how you see how much enayim sechel. Everything is what? It's all emotion by them. Why? They don't have never sechlit. Do you imagine a whole city getting brit milahs just at the prospect of marrying a Jewish woman? Being with her. Forget about Being with her, Yeah. <laughs> And her brothers from two sides, Shimon and Levi, they decide we're gonna do some revenge. Yaakov Avinu, it's very nice your way of peace, but we decide if the guy gives us a punch, you have to do two punches back. Vayavo alayir betach. That's what pasuk says. What? We know what betach means. For sure. They had no qualms. They knew they were going to win. Now, how did two... Th one is 13 years old. One is 14 years old. How does a 13 and a 14 year old have... You know what betach is? Betach. You know, if a person's bebitachon, he's bebitachon. He's, he's full bitachon. They were... They learned chovat alevavot. They were be full, be full bitachon. They learned... They learned... The, and they slaughtered every... And, and Shechem, you know what they did to Shechem? They put him in the microwave. They put him in the microwave. Lefichar, you know what lefichar is? They put, they, they, see, this is the tip. Lefichar, they did it. What was Yaakov Avinu's answer to them? To what they did? What did you do to me? How could you allow such a thing to happen? 
Don't you know that I'm a two small camps over here? You're fighting a war against seven empires? What did they answer to Yaakov? Hakizona yase Where is your gava, Abba? Where is your gava, Eloki? Where is your emuna? That's what they answered to Yaakov Abin. Where is your emuna and Hashem's promise to you? Midrash says the Ramban takes a side. Ramban with an, the with nun. Who was right over here? Says the Ramban. Shimon Velevi or Yaakov? Don't be too fast to answer this question. Yaakov, Yaakov curses their anger. Their anger he curses. Right? The anger he curses. He doesn't curse them. Right? They killed the whole city. Women and children too. Everybody. It's a question, I know, that Gaza right now, the whole world is saying, oh, how are you touching civilians, this, that, civilians, civilians. Hostage was a hostage. She didn't want to leave, though. She didn't want to leave. She was, she was defiled. She was like a bat kohen. She said, what am I going to, who's going to take me now? You might as well. Shimon said, no, you got to come out. By the way, Shimon is the is the is the tribe that was the most most cursed, not most cursed, but most least blessed out of all the Shvatim. It didn't even have a portion in Eretz Yisrael, not even a portion. By the way, it's a lot connected with the week's parasha with the Hakizonaya said Achoteinu, what they did with the Erev Rav. I saw a perush once. I'm just gonna mention this on the side. Don't quote me. At the end of Kali Yisrael in the desert. Bil'am sends the Mu'aviyot and the Midianiyot, all those zebras, zebras to uh, zebracate all the Kal Yisra, and they catch Shimon's tribe. What does Shimon do? He falls. He falls. What does Levi do? He doesn't fall. He kills. And Pinchas becomes a Kohen, and Shimon doesn't even get a blessing from Moshe at the end of his at the end of his life. Correct? Mm -hmm. So I saw Pirush, don't quote me please, because I don't remember where I saw this. Why was Shimon uh, cursed? Not cursed, but not blessed. And he didn't even have a portion in the land. Because when Levi went to fight against Shem, he did it in the name of Hashem. You heard this Pirush? Yeah. You heard this Pirush? Yeah. Okay, tell me after the shir where you heard it. When Levi went to fight against Shechem, he did it for the sake of Hashem. When Shimon went to fight, he did it out of, out of revenge, out of emotion. When you don't, when you don't do things l'shem shamayim, at the end you fall on the same avera yourself. Because you don't see Hashem in it. So when Shimon was faced with the same avera, with the Benot Moab in Midian, he fell. He fell. It's a beautiful perush, by the way. It's, but I'm afraid to say it because I don't know where I saw it. But my point is, what the Ramban, Nachman, he says, that Shimon and Levi were correct. Rambam doesn't agree. Rambam. Maimonides doesn't agree. Nachmanides agrees with Shimon and Levi. Halakhically, he says they were correct. They were correct. Why? There are seven mitzvot b'nei Noach. What is one of the mitzvot? Dalit. Dinim. What's dinim? Law and order. When Shechem violated Dina, what was they supposed to do to Shechem? Kill him. What did they all do instead? They took his side. So what does that mean? They're all accomplices. So when Gaza, they vote for Hamas, what are they all? They're all accomplices. Halakhically, what would Shimon and Levi do? Hakizona yase tachoteinu? Correct or incorrect? And what does Hashem do for Shimon and Levi? What does He do for them? Vayehi chitat elokim. God puts a kind of a, a protection on them, but a fear on all the nations, seven empires against two. There were not even 70 people at that time. Shnei machanon, maybe there were 50 people. They didn't fight against Bnei Yaakov. That's the fight between them. Now I want to get to the next point. This is what I said. We're going to get to the last point. Oh, we have five minutes. 
At the end of Parashat Vayechi, Yaakov says to Yosef, so what I want to tell you, there's two ways of dealing with the Goy. What's one way? Yaakov's way? And Shimon and Levi's way. Rambam versus Ramban. Okay, it's two ways. So when you see the other people going this way, giving him Kav oh, he's going to like the Rambam. And when they go this way, oh, he's going to like the Rambam. There's a Kav Zahud over here, right? There's many people that are fighting over it. Should you release the hostages? Should you not release the hostages? There is a fight going on over there. A lot of people are saying, you know, you're not allowed to. You're, you're, you're basically letting a whole country go just because... And some people say, what do you mean? One Jew, if Rabbi Vada Yosef, one Jewish life is worth 1,200 of these hayot. Of course you could release for three, right? One for three. Anyway, it's machloket going on. But in that machloket, you could find the kafzichut. That's what I'm trying to say to you over here. And also you see the machloket between Rabbi Yehuda Nasi and his secretary. Rabbi Afas. What, should you talk to the, to the emperor of Rome, I'm your servant Yehuda? No, have gava. Have Jewish pride. Say, no, I am the Prime Minister of Israel. I'm Rabbi Uda Hanasi. And I'm speaking to you, Antoninus, the Emperor of Rome. You're the Emperor of Rome, not my Emperor. Right? Know how to speak. There was, by the way, a Jewish president, Prime Minister, Israeli. His name was Yitzhak Shamir. I don't know if you guys know who he is. Only if you know Jewish history, you know, or you lived back then. <laughs> Yitzhak Shamir... <laughs> When the U.S. president will tell him, you're not allowed to build on the West Bank, you're not allowed to do this, he'll say, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. But hey, tell me what you said again. I, that my mind, say, let me write it down, Mr. President. And then he would go to Israel, and he would, uh, he would do the exact opposite. Then the president would come and say, what are you doing? I'm giving you money and everything. Stop going against me. Yes, Mr. President, I'm so sorry. I can't control them. And then he would do it again. <laughs> so, so you see, there is a, there is a way to do it. It's here, it's like Shamir. You want to light a candle for him? Why are you laughing so much? Le'ilu nishmato. Le'ilu nishmato. Yitzhak Shamir was the head of Lehi. You guys don't know that Lehi was a, um, he was a, uh, like a guerrilla warfare against the Arabs in the time of the British Mandate. They used to bomb uh, British cars. They used to... Uh, these, were, these were real fighters. They believed uh, in, the, in the land, like to take the whole land. Now, I want to tell you one beautiful... Huh? Menachem Begin was part of uh, not uh, not Lehi, but he was part of uh, Etzel, 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 Etzel. He was also there were also very strong fighters. When they tried to help Ben Gurion, what did Ben Gurion do to them? He bombed them. He tried to help. He tried to help. Tried to come in with weapons to, against the British mandate. What did the, what did Ben Gurion do? He bombed them. No, Ben Gurion told them submit yourself. Submit yourself, and what did they end up doing to him? And then he bombed him. They saw him as a traitor to the British. Yeah, but that's, listen, that's how do you mean. bomb your own brother? Because the British told him that if you don't... Because he was afraid because the nation was with him, that's why. Hope. He was afraid the nation was with him, with Begin. I don't want to get into Israeli history over here, but we see at the end Begin, the Likud, they, they've been in power since, almost since, right? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so it's a discussion for a different time, right? For Israeli, for modern state Israeli history, Okay. <clears throat> I want to tell you one thing from the parashah, and we're going to end with this. Two more minutes, give me guys, okay? Try not to say Kriyat Shema Lamita. We have over here, at the end of the parashah, Vayechi, Yaakov says to Yosef, I'm giving you an extra land. What is that? Shechem. Shechem. Asher laka... What's Shechem? Shechem ben? Chamol, Achivi. Right? And I'm giving it to you, Yosef. Not to Shimon, not to Levi. Why? I took this land, Becharbi or Bekashti. First of all, you didn't. <coughs> Who took it? Shimon and Levi. And if not, you bought it. Bemea Kisita. So the Unkalus doesn't translate Becharbi, my sword, Bekashti, and my arrow as bow and arrow. What does he translate that as? As my prayer. Bitsloti. What's Bitsloti? So what is the Unkalus he compares bow and arrow and sword with? Uncle, look at the Unkelus. Bitzloti, my prayer. So Shechem was acquired to Klal Yisrael not through fighting, but Unkelus says through what? Through davening. Davening specifically. How? He, yeah, do we see Yaakov davening for it? So the Mefarshim say Yaakov was so afraid that because of Shimon and Levi's fight, against Shechem, that all the seven empires will fight, will gang up against them and, and kill them. So when they, until they got to Yitzchak Avinu, 
יעקב אבינו, what does he do? Non-stop doubling. Non-stop prayer. So the question is, where was Yaakov Avinu all this time? If your davening is so potent, Yaakov, Yaakov Avinu, where were you till now? Why didn't you daven that this shouldn't happen? Why didn't you daven that it shalom? Why didn't you daven that it shouldn't Hashem, violate your daughter? Why didn't you daven that Shimon and Levi would calm down? Why did you wait till now to daven? First of all, there's the pshat answer. We don't daven until when? It's too late. Until it's too late. That's the pshat answer. People usually start to pray when we are in trouble. Correct or incorrect? That's what Rabbi Chia said in the Gemara to his wife. He wasn't a rich guy. He says, give tzedakah now so your kids won't have to give tzedakah. Won't have to ask for tzedakah later. That's what the Gemara says. So give now so in the future they won't have to ask for it. That's a very big lesson. Okay, so pray now. It means... Don't wait till your kids are in a bad situation, or you, to pray for the Yeshua. You have part Nasa now, let's say, for example. Keep on praying for it. It's good for you right now. Keep on praying for it, that it should be good. Don't ever think to yourself, <coughs> my prayers are petty. Some people say, why should I pray to Hashem? It's so cheap. Hashem, give me money. Every time you get money, it's like Kriyat Yamsu. Don't ask me, ask Gemara Masechet Sota, the first page, right? First or second page of it. Two things are as big as opening the sea. Money and marriage, right? One guy comes to the rabbi. Not, it doesn't say children over there. One guy comes to the rabbi. First of all, once you get married, you're Olam Abba. Once you get married, you have Olam Abba. Olam Abba. Tchiesa Mason. Raising up from the dead. Really? You're not with me, okay. <laughs> you with me? Yes. Are you sure? You have a lot of What do you mean? No, it's, you're good, you're good. Don't say that. You're good, you're good, you're good. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a boy and girl. As long as you got married, even once, even if you're divorced, you have a lot of Yes. Oh, you're good, okay. <laughs> Olam haba, you have to try. You have to try your best. Sometimes it doesn't work. What could you do? But it says, when a person um, gets married, he's okay olam haba. Now, this one guy comes to the rabbi, and he says, how come you don't do enough for me? What is this, black magic over here? Right? Like one guy said, you got to take the hair of the girl, put it inside the ground, uh, you got to put it in the birds. And what are you going to make her crazy after you? What is this for you? Uh, black magic. person wants to get married, has to do avoda. I heard a sigula from a very big rock. I think it's a true sigula. It's not taking water and saying perkei ilim on it and washing your face with it. There's a sigula like that too. I'll be honest with you. It's actually a very famous one. I used to do it myself when I was single. It's not going to the water and saying the 12 Nisi'im in Parashat Naso. There's a sigula like that too from Nahum Press. It's not, uh, I don't know, buying a wedding suit. It's not buying a talit for under... It's, uh, no, no. If you pick a Musar book, I don't know, Nefesh Haim, I don't know, some Musar book. A real Musar, or Chot Sadiqim. And they're all in English, by the way. All these books are in English. And you say, Hashem, I will learn this book. And Zot Hashem, I will... As I, I'm not going to change my character. But it's impossible when you finish... If you don't... When you learn these books, by the time you finish them, you don't change your character, then you're not from this world. You, then you belong in Gaza. You're an animal. Then I, if you learn this farim and you don't change, you don't belong here. These books have to change you. They, they just change. By learning them, they just... Shari Tshuva of Rabbi Yona. If you take... If you say, Hashem in Barak, I take these books. Let's say I like... My favorite Musar book is a Maspik Lov, the Hashem of Rabbi Abraham ben Arambam. I teach it in Yeshiva. I teach it in my class. I love the Sefer. It speaks to me. Some people love Chovat HaLevavot. I say, Hashem in Barak, I'm taking upon myself every day to learn Chovat HaLevavot. By the time I finish this book, you give me a Badzuk. I will... I will do Kriyat Yamsuk to myself. 
Mm-hmm. You open me creative because you know to be married, you have to change. I'm not giving you a lesson on marriage. That's already Tuesday night. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I'm a master in Shalom Bayit. I'm not. It's not my, hey, you say, you got to stay in your lane. It's not my, it's not my lane, but I'll tell you. One thing I can tell you, if you're not going to be willing to change, you're not going to stay married. You're not going to stay. So if you tell Hashem, I'm going to learn this Musar book, and we all learn Musar books. And by the time, and Hashem, you, you help me, I finish this Musar book, and you give me my living Musar book. What's a wife? She's a living Musar book. But this one actually talks to you. Like the AI. You don't do good like this. You don't do good like that. Change the way you look. Take a shave. Lose some weight. Uh, I don't know. Stop sleeping in. No, if she tells you grow some hair, that's already too much. That's already Muster Book times two. That's, the, that's uh, Gen Z. Uh, uh, st- go to shul. Stop drinking. Stop smoking. Stop eating. That's a living Muster Book. <laughs> oh, they say that too. Uh, that's a living Muster Book. First, they upset at you, why come you don't eat their food? And then if you eat too much, they're upset at you, why you eat it? And it's that, so they're never happy. So it's mus, it's mus, wait, it's Musa. That's what's called mus, suffering. What's Musar? Suffering. The word Musar means affliction. So when the Gemara says, marriage is a burden on your shoulders, it's true. Listen, it's not, chas shalom, I'm, anti, I'm, a, I'm an anti-feminist, I'm a misogynist for saying it's a burden. It is a burden. But it's a burden that gives you happiness. Mm-hmm. It may not be pleasurable <laughs> all the kids, time. Kids also it may not be pleasurable all the time because you're you're it's in a suffering. box. It's a it's a, it, there is suffering over there. You can't uh, do this, do that, come to me. To this. Guys don't like to go to parties. <laughs> Men don't like to go to parties. Come to me to this wedding, come to me to this party, come to me to this game. I don't want to. I want to stay home. Leave me alone. No, come with me. Is that suffering? For me, it's a lot of. For me, it's it's like hot coals on my body. I don't know about you. For me, it's it's gain on. You know, you know. Rav Vidal Koyinka says over here, a Talmid Chacham. If you, I'm not saying I'm a Talmid Chacham. If you take away from his Torah, if you take away from his learning. If you tell him to go shopping, for him it's gain on. That's what he says over here in Chukia Chaim, and it's true. You tell him to go. You tell him to go shopping. It's gain on. And it is. There was one Rebbe I used to learn by him. Don't open, I don't want to start. It's not my lane. But I'm just telling you one thing. There was a Rebbe I used to learn with. I'm not going to say his name. He's in Sot now. Okay? He used to tell I used to learn by him. He was in Williamsburg. He used to tell me that his wife always told him to go shopping. Okay. It's, it's, uh, he had like nine kids. Who's going to take care of Who's going to go shopping? He obviously has to go shopping. So he, said, he asked his Rebbe, listen, it's from, I can't stop learning Torah. It makes me crazy to go, I can't tell her that. What am I, crazy? So his rabbi told him, start doing brachot b'kavanot harashash, she tells him. Don't quote me on this. If it's possible to erase this part, erase it. He said, start, when you say blessings on food, do kavanot harashash, she tells him. You're going to see that the kavana you put over there is enough avodah in your life, and she's going to find a way to figure it out. She's going to leave you alone. He said, I did it. One day, two day, three weeks, four. It didn't work right away. After four or five months, he started to see. She used to ask him every other week. Once a month. And he looked at me. He's like 70 years old. He's telling me this. And now everything is good. When you ask for it, what do you say? Huh? No, this is already far from us. But I'm just letting you know. that If you ask Avodah from Hashem and you're genuine... He's not going to make you avoda to do it anything else. I'm not saying don't do what shopping for your wife. For him, it was suffering. For that guy, it was suffering. For me, for all of us, we have to do this. this is what it means. What else are we going to do? I'm just letting you know that it's suffering that brings to happiness. It's happiness. What do we look for these days? For pleasure. Instant. Instant pleasure. If you're looking for instant pleasure, your marriage is going where? I don't want to say. If you're looking for pleasure, you're done. Because it's not pleasure. But it's happiness. It's happiness. I'm not saying it's all the Rachachamim say. Maybe I said it in a very comical way. Marriage is happiness. It's not pleasure. You know what pleasure is? On Shabbat. 
Pleasure is not Bishabbat, Bishabbat. Pleasure is Bishabbat. You come home. Am I right or wrong? Chacham, am I right or wrong? Yes or no? Am I just say I'm right? Thank you. So, you come home Shabbat. You go to shul. It's so calming on Shabbat that you fall asleep in the middle of the drasha. You know, you ever see those guys? The rabbi is giving the speech at Shabbat. It's a 10 minute speech. He's sleeping over there. He's in, he feels so... You know why he sleeps? He's so calm. After working all week, and, they, and we really do work, he finally could fall asleep. And the most pure lullaby is the, is the drasha of the chacham. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. When I see those people, I say... I love those guys, you know, because they just, and they have to sit right in front of you, by the way. And they sit in front of you, they just fall asleep during your drasha, and you, and, and, because they, they're calm. In their nishama, they're calm. Shabbat is calming, you know? And even though the kids are all home, you sit down at a table, and you're slowly, shalom aleichem. You know, you're not eating like you're in some kind of race to go somewhere, you know? Sometimes, you know, when you have, especially when you have a lot of kids, you're eating like you're in a race. By the time you, you took a one gulp, you got to change this one's diapers and this one. Shabbat is minuha, it's calm. Oneg is where? On Shabbat. Pleasure is where? On Shabbat. Happiness is all the time. All the time. Now the real Oneg is going to be Be'emot HaMashiach very soon in our days. I'm not done. I have to do this. One second. There's one. Five, five more seconds, guys. I'm so sorry. I know. I'm really over time, but... Just bear with me, okay? But it's your Allah Mabba, okay? And mine too. Says, so Yaakov Avinu was davening for Shechem. He was davening for Shechem. Yes or no? Yes. Hope my wife doesn't listen to this viewer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Yaakov Avinu was davening for Shechem. Now the question is, how could you daven for somebody else? Who messed up over here? Shimon and Levi. Why should Yaakov suffer for it? Why should Yaakov suffer for it? His kids. Right? What is his kids? Father should, shouldn't suffer for his son, and the son sh shouldn't suffer for the father. Each bechet o, and I don't want to finish the sentence, right? Each one and according to his sin. If they messed up, they should mess up. In fact, if Yaakov was so for peace, who should he have given over Yaakov, Shimon, and Levi to? To the seven empires. Hey, listen, they messed up, go take them. Peace. We see Yaakov doesn't do that. When it comes to his kids, he davens. He davens to Hashem, and Hashem answers him till he gets to. We all know he gets to uh, Yitzchak. Okay? So I want to tell you something crazy. It says over here, Rabbi Vidal Koyinka, and I would love to give you a small shiur about him, but I can't. Like I told you, he was a chacham from Saloniki and everything. And he says, he says something beautiful over here. I'm going to tell you outside. Hope you trust me. He says, it's possible when a person davens, <clears throat> this is what he's saying over here, daflamid hey, that when you daven, you're able to pick up, to uplift all the prayers that were frozen in their places because they didn't have the ability to go up. And not just yours. You're also able to pick up sure. tfilot of people from your Shoresh Nishama. I'm going to read it to you inside. Vizem mashe katu chachamim. Ksha adam omer tfila bekavana. When a person says tfila bekavana, bekavana. And he explains what's kavana over here. It's not what you think. It's not kavana harashash and everything. Kol otam atfilot atchuyo. There are tfilas that Hashem, it doesn't get to Hashem. It doesn't get to kisei akavod. There are tfilas that are stuck in midair. Sometimes you wonder, where did my tfila go? Where is my tfilot? They're stuck. How come they're not answers? They're tchuyot. They're pushed away. It's beautiful. She'amarta belo kavana. Because you said them without kavana. Remember, tefillah without kavana doesn't get accepted. Ve'ata yechol lekabtsam imotat tefillah shekivanta ba. If you have one day of good tefillah, Rachamim, Roman, you have a one good day. And you mamash daven be kavana. When I say kavana, be cheshek. That's what he writes. What is cheshek is? Echum cheshek. The bottom of your heart. Something, there's a better word for it. Echum cheshek, huh? The sincerity. Sincerity. You daven with sincerity. You daven with want. You know? Desire. Sometimes you have those days, right? You just come to tefillah. Shacharit, it's ifi, but sometimes mincha and marv. Arabic also it's iffy sometimes in Mincha, but it could be Shacharit once in a while it happens. 
six thirty, it's a problem, right? But if you come to eight thirty, it should be more b'chesha, right? Sometimes you come to feel it, you're b'chesha. You come to the shul and suddenly you with a smile. You start off the day with seven hakafot, as the Ariyat Kadosh says. You put on your talis and fill it. You say every word of korbanot. You have kavanan tefillah. That tefillah can pick up thousands of your tefillot that weren't able to go up till now and suddenly the bakasha that you've been asking for years will come true. Mm. Do you know why your tefill don't come true? They're frozen. Yeah. They're there, but they're frozen. Because you know how you daven? You come to shul, you say hi to everybody. As you're saying korbanot, you're speaking to this guy and that guy. You're making a couple of jokes here and there. Shmonaise, if it's no tachan on that day, if the rabbi picks me to go up to the aliyah, you're turned off, and then it's that's it. And you think you're at Sadiq Salam, and you are, you came to shul, you're better than 99.99%, but your tefillah is frozen. Says Rabbi Vidal Kinga, you can't, it doesn't go up. It doesn't go up. He, he says, sometimes you prayed korbanot with kavana, you picked it up to Yitzira and it got stuck in Yitzira. Sometimes you dive in korbanot and zimirot be kavana, it gets stuck in Bria. Sometimes you dive in nothing be kavana, and suddenly in Shmon Aisra, you did good. What happens then? Sometimes you got the tefillah up to Atzilut, to Shmon Aisra, and it got stuck. And now suddenly today you dive in Shmon Aisra with Kavana, you're able to take all those ones that are stuck in Shmon Aisra and pick them up, he writes over here. Things, the Rebim Kudor Banot over here. That's why Yaakov Avinu, when he says to Yosef, I took Shechem Bekharbi with my sword, Ubekashti. Why does he call Tfilah, and what does Unkulu say? My Tfilah. Why does he call Tfilah Kharbi Ubekashti? Sometimes Tfilah is mamash like a sword and a bow and arrow. It's like an RPG. You have suddenly thousands of tefillot that are waiting to go up. What does it need? A little boost. It needs a bow and arrow. Sometimes that day your Shmonaisra can pick everything up. Who didn't allow all the nations to devour uh, Yaakov Avinu? Yaakov Avinu's tefillah. Yeah, he was a pacifist. The Midrash calls him out on it. But he saved his family. Bicharbi u It wasn't Shimon and Levi's tefillah. Shimon and Levi's tefillah, they weren't. It doesn't say that they were davening. Who was davening? Yaakov Avinu was davening. Bicharbi u bekashti. Bitzlo. What's bitzlo? With davening. You're asking Hashem for your wife. You're asking Hashem for pardon yourself. You're asking Hashem for teach it yadecha or mosbielo chayr atzol. When is all that gonna happen? When you daven when? Be? Be? Say the words. You're looking at me like you're frozen. You're also frozen in place? Where are you? In Asiya, Biriya, Yitzya, Atzilud, where are you? Bekava, now you have to daven! Now, you guys sitting over here, how do you guys daven Bekava now? How? Hmm? All those kavanot that you guys heard in this shiori, if you heard them, you gotta do them. Arbam mitot bedin, you heard it? It was meant for you, you gotta do it. You heard rapach nitzotzot? You gotta do it. You heard, you better hear it. You heard el nekamot Hashem, el nekamot afiyah? You gotta do it. Hashem melech, Hashem malach, all these are small kavanot. You have to ask yourself how rough to teach you, why? You want? You need a sword and a bow and arrow. Until Yaakov didn't use his, it didn't happen. He didn't get Shechem. And so too with the Chatufim. You know, don't think Israel made a deal with Hamas and suddenly they gave them up. It was a miracle that they agreed to what they agreed. If on one soldier they asked for 1,000 people, how did they suddenly say for one, so, for one uh, citizen they said three only? All this is our tefillot, Rabbi Yisai. And we could have done it stronger. We could have done it better. We have to continue. Guys, don't give up hope. There is a, I'm going to end with this. There is a Kabbalah from the Shomer and Munim. It would be Aaron Rata. He says that the first Mashiach was not David Amelech. Sure. Mashiach, it was who? Sure. Shaul, before him. Sure. He was one of the Shoftim. Shimshon, Shimshon. He was a Nazir, he was the Keter. What's a Nazir's hair? He's Keter. Who was his fight against? Pelishtim. Where and where did he die? In Gaza, not Gaza, in Gaza. Ki Aza, Kina, Kishol, Kina, Rishafer, Rishve, Eshal, Hevet, Yahweh, Sein, Cheresh, Yemim. What's Az, Hevet, Az, Kenamel? 
And where is it going to all end? There. In Aza. In Aza. Over there, our Keter fell. Shimshon fell in Aza. Over there, we're going to get... Rav Aaron Rata says this. Over there, we're going to... I heard from somebody. And over there, we're going to get our Keter back. So, B'zot Hashem, Yisbarach. May we be zochet to get our keter back. Are you now back? May zochet Hanukkah Sameach. May the brachar v'chad zarayu shuot for nazar fuazi v'gim agoni. May the tzeich et kol aravim. May the tzeich et kol Hamas nigim. Shelo yishama hoshot v'shem v'chamas baritzechem v'chetzonu. Amen.